it's only like either biggest, you're lying or I can't hear anything. The biggest truck in Whiteside I County. One of these days I'm gonna see you, and after that I'll see you. See, that's the thing. He yeah, says he wants it. I think it's oh, weird. Right? All. Crazy, crazy stuff. All right, so okay, and wave. Today we're learning about isosceles triangles. We're gonna have to start the class with a little debate. First off, somebody give me a definition for what an isosceles triangle is. Anybody know? Let me get my Googler. Alex. Well, the, uh, triangle, um, uh, triangle that's got two sides, right? Yeah. Right. 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 That's true. Not all the angles will necessarily be the same in an isosceles. That's true, but that's not really the definition. But not bad. That's true about it. We're going to learn something about that today. Isosceles triangle. Anybody got a definition for me? Can't even get on the Googler? Oh, I'll get on the Googler. I don't want you to, but I guess you can. Can't stop you. Hello. What do you think? Uh, it's a triangle that has two sides of equal length. Sometimes is specified as having exactly two sides of equal length. Ooh. It's the same thing. Well, Google it's sometimes as having at least two sides of equal length. All right, so since Brandon read that, no one gets to respond. Or Brandon doesn't get to respond. Isosceles triangle, two sides of even length. That's essentially what he just said. So this is an isosceles triangle. You have two sides that match up. Pop quiz. Debate. Is this triangle isosceles or is it not? No, no. It is. I hear no's. Be prepared to back up your answer. I think it is. Anyone going to take the yes? Eden's going to take the yes. Tell us why no. It is equilateral. All sides are the same. And so you're saying equilaterals can't be isosceles. Okay, valid statement. You want to give your opinion, Maddie? Why is this not isosceles? Because um, the angles are the same. Not bad. Eads, why is it isosceles? Why is it? Yeah. Because it has two sides that are the same, and sometimes all three sides can be the same. That's a very good point. So we have two ways of thinking about this. We have Eads way, which is saying, isosceles, all it says is two sides have to be the same. Well, I see two sides that are the same, so it's isosceles. The rest of you guys are saying, no way. Equilateral can't be the same thing as isosceles. A little bit of a philosophical argument here. Yes, Alex. All I can say about that is it's not, uh, I don't know why I have that word in there also. There's not enough information to tell in a lot of the way. Oh, whether both, of the, both are isosceles? I suppose so. Yeah, that's, that's a valid way of saying it. Um, here's what we're going to do in here, because there is a little bit of a philosophical debate, as you've seen on Google, right? Sometimes it says exactly two sides, sometimes it says at least two sides, right? In here, we're going to say this is both equilateral and isosceles, okay? And the reason for that is we're going to have some theorems that apply to isosceles triangles that would then also apply to equilateral, right? So anything that applies for an isosceles triangle, for the most part, will apply to an equilateral triangle, okay? So we're going to consider these both isosceles. This one's probably the one we talk about 99% of the time, the one where it's just two sides that are the same, right? But we'll consider this isosceles. So this version is both equilateral and isosceles. Is this both equilateral and isosceles? No. Equilaterals were all the sides are the same, right, Brent? Right? And this one does not fit. So it turns out equilateral triangles are isosceles, but isosceles triangles aren't always equilateral. This is the same thing with squares and rectangles. If I've got a square, what do you know about squares? Side. Equal sides. So all the sides are the same. What else do you know about squares? It has four sides. Good, I gave you that for free. Right angles. That's right, buddy. That's a square. How is a square different from a rectangle? A rectangle has two equal sides and another two equal sides. Two equal sides and another two equal sides. You got a right angle. So given this much information on this diagram, the best we can hope to conclude is that this is a rectangle. We know that for sure. Right? It could be a square if it turns out that these guys are equal as well. Could be, right? So rectangles are not squares, 
unless they have all their sides being the same. Then we call it a square just to put, right? Now, the definition of a rectangle is we have all right angles, and we have opposite sides congruent. Now look over here. Do we have all right angles? Yeah. Do we have opposite sides congruent? I'll say it again. The definition of a rectangle is we have all right angles, and opposite sides are congruent. Does that check out over here? So a square is a rectangle. A square. Have have both angles. Exactly. All squares are rectangles. I know what you're saying. Right? Not all rectangles are squares. I know you don't like that. But it's true. That square qualifies as a rectangle. He's overqualified. You hear about that where you go to college, you get a master's degree, and you end up working in the fry cook, right? You're overqualified for the job, right? You got too many degrees. If you have a master's degree, it doesn't mean you can't end up working as a fry cook. There's nothing wrong with that, right? You can be. A square, he's been to a lot of school. He's a square. That's what we call people that go to a lot of school, right? Right? He can still be considered a rectangle. Now, the rectangle doesn't have enough things to be considered a square, right? So one goes one way, the other goes the other. Squares can be rectangles, but rectangles aren't always squares. In fact, most of the time they're not. So same thing with these triangles. Equilateral triangle is a very specific kind of triangle, right? Everything has to be equal, very specific. It's kind of like the square, right? It's got a lot of stipulation. It's got to be this, 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 and this. Well, it turns out this triangle over here doesn't meet any of those stipulations, so we can't call this one equilateral, right? It doesn't meet the rules for it to be an equilateral. This definitely does. This one doesn't, right? Now, isosceles has less rules about it, right? Only two sides need to be the same. This guy's overqualified, but he's still considered isosceles. Now, is that the name we want to use for him? No way. So let me tell you a story. When I went to school, they went to Illinois, went to high school, my alma mater. We had a couple of teachers, older teachers. show us at the beginning of every class, he's the biology teacher, he would say, look, we pass out this picture to everybody to look at. This is a picture of a very large man. He'd be like, do you believe it? This should be me. He's a super tall, slim, slim guy. He walks like this down the hall. Like, do you believe it? My, uh, my wife found me under a bridge. I was drunk and all alone and, and you know, miserable with myself. And she cleaned me up and we're married to this day. And I look at me now, right? I swim every morning. I had to deal. This was all weird dude. And again, he walked down the hallway like this. And the reason for that is because he used to work on the railroad. And when he worked on the railroad, he had a couple cars with him, right? And so what he did one day is he just coupled his two cars, right? The cars are backing in, making sure they're in, he's going to slide the pin in. He wasn't paying attention. And his left arm got stuck in between these two couples. And of course, when you feel that type of pain, which is a lot, he yanked. He yanked all his tendons out. So his tendons stay behind. Part of his arm left. Now, I put him back together. That was a long time ago. They didn't put him back together well. So when he walks, it makes his arm go up like this. And I think we all know why you don't want to be walking around like this in the hallway, right? So in order to balance it out, can you explain? Like this. No, let's go on Mr. Lavelle. That's Mr. Lavelle. Mr. Lavelle played guitar. He had a bunch of guitar magazines in the back of class. If we got done with biology early, we could go back there and look them up. They always had classifieds in the back. Pretty honest stuff. Um, but he didn't care because he was a couple years away from retirement. Mr. Lavelle doesn't you know, care about it. He does what he wants, right? He was in a band. He played guitar with another one of the teachers. The other teacher, Dr. Blackwell, was playing this story. Okay? He played bass. Dr. Blackwell was the opposite of Mr. Lavelle in every way. He's a much larger man. This man had pudgy hands, right? You go by in the hall hallway and be like, hey, Dr. Blackwell, high five. And you go up to a high five and you high five and your hand would sink in three inches. Very pudgy hands, right? Dr. Blackwell, he talked like this, right? And we were from Sandwich, Illinois, so we'd always be like, hey, Mr. Blackwell, right? We never used to have some doctor as a teacher. And you're like, that's a doctor, right? Bell played guitar, and then I had another teacher named Mr. Pollen, who I think played drums. And they're like these super old guys, right? All of them are retired now. Mr. Pollen's a Cubs fan. He got to see the Cubs World Series before he died. Mr. Lavelle, I think, is still alive. He just had a heart attack a couple years ago. Dr. Blackwell had no idea. He was my total friend. So shout out to Dr. Blackwell if you're watching this soon. Um, but anyway, the point is, you can call Dr. Blackwell Mr. Blackwell. He has a degree, so we prefer if he calls Dr. But he's really a doctor. That's the better thing for him. You can call a square a rectangle. But really, the best name is a square, right? Less
professor name is a rectangle. It's like if you have a doctor versus your master's, right? You can just call him Mr. if you want. But really, the best name is square. Same thing here. The best name for this triangle is an equilateral, right? But we can't call it isosceles. It does have two matching sides. So I want to mess with you, like I used to mess with Dr. Blackwell, Mr. Blackwell, Dr. Blackwell. Um, that's the thing you got to look out for. Fun story time. All right. I don't want to scare our new student. A lot of my stories are a little extreme. She's not ready for it yet. When she gets ready, I'll tell you more about Dr. Blackwell and uh, Mr. Lavelle. There are some stories about those guitar magazines. Probably didn't have a teacher who jumped on top of the desk and screamed as the truck drives by. <laughs> <laughs> So the, so the thing was is that the dump truck was distracting class because it was so loud. So your teacher jumped up on the desk and, yelled at and screamed, which would be not distracting the class at all. Right. Yeah. Right. No, he had 10 kids, so he was a little awful. I, uh, I had a math teacher that threw his desk at a kid once. It was amazing. Kids. Yeah. amazing. He was a very interesting man. Math anyway, I won't say anything. So, Isosceles triangles, two sides are the same, right, at least. This says if two sides of a triangle are the same, so we're talking isosceles, right? Then the angles opposite those sides are congruent. So if I know, that's an arrow, by the way. Okay, don't make fun of my drawings. If we know the sides are the same, then we know the angles opposite those sides are the same. See how that side is across from that angle? and that side is across from that angle. So they go together. That's what this theorem says. Tucker. Yes, it does. Thank you. first. Ooh, it was close. It's like right on your hand too there, bud. All right. So that's what that means. Now what you need a pen? No, it probably says that it went with the angle If these two sides are the same, then their opposite angles will be the same. Yeah, but everything you just said that I talked to the triangle that Right, that's not the definition. That's going to be a theorem. So you talked about it earlier. It ends up that that's not part of the definition. It's one of the things that just happens to be true about isosceles. It's a weird distinction. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. All you need to know is you're not wrong, okay? You were right. So if the sides are the same, the angles are the same. Always true. Two sides the same, two angles the same. That's the isosceles triangle theorem. Now, the converse of that, we, we briefly spoke about converse in here first semester. Converse means to flip, right? To do the opposite of. So when we say two sides of a triangle congruent, that means the angles opposite those sides are congruent. We can also flip that around and do the converse. If the angles are congruent, then the opposite sides are congruent. So we can kind of go in reverse. So the isosceles triangle theorem converse is that instead of starting with the sides the same, we can say if we have this, then we know this. Does that make sense? If two sides are the same, then the two angles are the same. If the two angles are the same, then their sides are the same. It goes both ways, right? And that's totally OK. Not all theorems will have a converse that is true, but this one does, OK? So it goes both ways. Now, uh, yes, sir. Now, ugh, all the science pressure feel like my eyes are going to pop out of the back of my head. If they do, we'll keep going, OK? All right, so theorems versus postulates. A postulate is something we believe. Right? It has to be true. There's no way around it. It's got to be true. And from that, we can prove other things, right? At some point, it's a leap of faith. It comes down to a leap of faith as a foundation, right? Now, from those, we can prove theorems. Theorems are provable. This is a theorem, which means we can prove it. So we're going to learn the proof for the theorem today and why it's true, right? Because it's like if somebody tells you these two sides are the same, then that means those two angles are the same. Great. But why is the question you should be asking, right? We're going to prove that right now, OK? We're going to prove both. This is the regular version where they give you the sides and they say prove the angles. And on the other side, they give you the angles and are going to prove the sides, OK? So buckle up. Another postulate. 
that we haven't officially talked about yet. It's called the Let There Be Line Postulate. So that's what I call it. And it says that whenever you want, you can draw a line. Whenever you want. Yes, sir. Okay. True for everybody. You can draw a line anytime you want. And not only that, but you can draw a line and say that it hits another line at 90 if you want. Alex, what do you play? About the earlier stuff? Not all the angles will be different. Two of the angles will be the same, one will be different. Is that cleared up? So, here's what we're given. We're given a triangle and they call it ABC. I think you can see that. I'm gonna zoom out just a little. And they gave us that CA is congruent to CB. So on our diagram, mark that CA is congruent to CB. We're gonna start with that. That's all we're allowed to start with because we're trying to prove that if we know these two sides, then we get these two angles, okay? So that's what we're starting with. We're gonna prove that these two angles go together. So we're gonna use the let there be line postulate. So here's what that says. It says that you're allowed to draw a line between any two points you want and say, I want that to hit it at 90 degrees, okay? More or less is what it says, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at C and I'm gonna draw a line from C down to the bottom and I'm gonna say it hits it at 90 degrees, right? I don't know how to make that line necessarily perfectly. I don't have the tools to do it. But I'm allowed to say, that's 90, so says me. OK? You're allowed to do that whenever you want. So now that I have an intersection point, I'm going to call it something else. Let's call it D. You're allowed to draw a line and make it hit it at 90 whenever you want. Sometimes that's going to help you solve things. It's going to help us in this one, OK? So we're going to say let, not let there be line, but let CD be perpendicular to AB. You're allowed to say that whenever you want. Let is like let there be light. You're creating something. You're creating that CD, right? And you're saying let it be perpendicular to AB. So we're just talking about what we did over on the diagram, right? You can say that and make that happen whenever you need. So my goal now, since I have two triangles, is I'm going to try and prove these two triangles congruent. And then I'll know their angles match up, right? So in order to prove them congruent, I'm going to need some more information, right? Right now, I don't have enough to prove them congruent. I don't have angle, angle, side. I don't have side, angle, angle, any of that, right? So Eads says he sees some shared sides, right? The left triangle shares this side with the right triangle. So let's write that. CD is congruent to itself by shared side, right? Now, we almost have enough information to, solve, to prove these triangles congruent. If you look at the right side triangle, we've got hypotenuse and a leg, right? So we can use HL, hypotenuse leg. Because it's a right triangle, and we know the hypotenuse and the leg are matching, right? But the problem is, look at the left side triangle. Do we know it's 90? Not yet. I bet you guys are like, oh my god, it is, right? Please. Of course it is. How do we know? How do you know they're congruent? Not yet. Don't know that yet. Does anybody remember linear pair theory? little or no? No? Okay. All right. So let me go over just in case you forgot. Alex remembers this. So linear pair theorem says if you have two angles making a line, then that they are going to be supplementary, right? Two angles on a line, linear pair, something like this. That means those two angles right there are going to add up to 90. They can look like this. They can look like that, right? But they're going to add up to 90. Or sorry, 180. Keep it speaking. So linear pair theorem says if you have two angles making a line, then those two angles must add up to 180. You with me? So if they add up to 180, and that's 90, what does this guy have to be? It has to also be 90, right? 180 minus 90 is 90 left over. So I need to write in how I got that. Now I'm being pretty persnickety about this one, because you could say we could assume it from here, right? But I'm being pretty persnickety. I also wanted to review linear pair theorem. So by linear pair theorem, 
What's the name of this angle that I just put down? What's the name of that angle? I know it's 90. It's a right angle, right? But what's the name of the angle? What am I going to call it? I can't call it angle B. I've got two angle Bs here. I need to be more specific. Can't call it E. There's no E. I'm not going to add any dots. Just D. Nope, can't call it D. Which angle D? We've got two angle Bs here. A, D, C. A, D, C. We're going to call it A, D, C. Because there's only one angle A, D, C, right? The other one, B, D, C. So we're going to say angle ADC, the measure of it is 90 degrees. And that's how we knew, by linear pair theorem, right? Two angles on a line, they add that up to 180. Now, like a dead cat, I'm going to back up and go over this again, OK? So if you're not getting it the first time, that's OK. Are you sort of smelling what I'm stepping in, though? Sort of? Do I be at like 25, 50%? Because I'll take that for now. It's the first time we've done this. Yeah, great. If you're better than that, fantastic. If not, no big deal. That's normal. You should feel a little bit like we're closing in space here. Okay? Now check it out. Now I know both triangles are right triangles. So now I can say they're congruent by HL because hypotenuses match and legs match. Remember, we're only allowed to use HL when we know they're 90s, right? And now we do. So we've got that they're 90. We've got that their legs match. And they gave us that their hypotenuses match, right? So now we can say by HL, the triangle is congruent. So I'm going to write by HL, the first triangle, let's call it ACD. Congruent to the other triangle. Now, we've got to match up the letters, right? You guys remember that from the quiz? We can't just write them in any order. So ACD, if I wrote ACD, there's a certain order I have to write these ones in. So let's check. Angle A is our first angle, right? A is made up of the hypotenuse and the side we don't know, right? So I go over here, hypotenuse, side we don't know. A is going to go with what angle? B. Now C, on the left side triangle, is this angle right here. It's made up of the hypotenuse and the side we know. So I go over here, hypotenuse side I know. Well, C is going to be congruent to itself. D for the first triangle is this side right here, right? Side we don't know, side we do know. Side we don't know, side we do know. D is going to be congruent to itself too. All right, I'm going to pause for station identification, let it catch up, and we're going to go back and run it over again, OK? Yes? Say again? D is a midpoint of the two? Yeah, it will be. We don't know that yet, but we can prove that later. It's because these triangles end up being the same, which means these two parts will be the same. So that means G is in the middle. But we have to prove the triangle is the same. Now that we have that, oh, we could say it. No, he wants D to be like this. He wants it to be yeah, B, B, C. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. So instead of A, C, D, B, C, D, you'd write A, C, D, B, D, C. B and C are, or D and C aren't going to go together because C is made up of the hypotenuse and the leg that we know. So I go over to the other triangle, hypotenuse, leg we know, right? D is made up of the leg we know and the leg we don't know. So it's going to go with itself both times. You see how we have D over here is the leg we don't know and the leg we know? And then if I go to the other triangle, leg we don't know, leg we know, it makes angle D. So in order to match up the angles, Alex, we have to check their sides. So angle A is made up of this hypotenuse and the unknown side, right? Now go to the other triangle. Where's my hypotenuse and unknown side? Hypotenuse, unknown side. See how they make up angle B? That's why A and B go together. I'm sorry, is that better or worse? OK, cool. Same thing with D, right? All right, so first off, is everybody cool with the let there be line theorem, or let there be line postulate? Right? Make a perpendicular, make whatever you want. After that, we have a shared side. Everybody cool with that? All right. Then, by linear pair theorem, if that's 90, they add up to 180. So that's got to be 92, right? 90 as well, not 92. Then my last thing, and I'm not done yet, but I'm very close to being done with this proof, is that now I can prove the triangles can grow by HL. What does HL stand for? 
hypotenuse leg. So in order to use HL, we have to have right triangles, right? Because only right triangles have a hypotenuse. So we have to have matching hypotenuses and matching legs. We've got it, right? 90 degree triangle, matching hypotenuses, matching legs. So that means the triangles must be congruent. Are we good up to there? Not bad for your first try, guys. I don't take it kind of slow and it feels like it's taking forever. This can go a lot faster once you get it. So last little bit. Our goal was to prove A and B congruent, right? Those two angles. So we're not done, right? We didn't end on that. So we're not done. Here's the thing we're going to learn today. New thing, okay? And this is how I abbreviate it. Here's the logic. If I've got two triangles and I know they're congruent, can't I say that their parts are congruent as well? So if this side is the same as this side, right? I'm sorry, if these triangles are congruent, can I say that these two sides must be the same? Right? If the triangles are congruent, then their parts are. Now, which ones? Well, we got to find out by matching them up, right? That's what we're doing down here with the letters, right? But if the triangles are congruent, then their parts should be, right? That makes sense. Now, that's a theorem. We're just going to accept it. So if you know the triangles are the same, you know that their parts should match up. The question is which ones? Well, it's going to be the corresponding, meaning same relative location, congruent parts. So we're going to say by CCP. CCP stands for corresponding congruent parts. I don't do of triangles because I want it to be more general. Right? Does that make sense? Okay. But that's true for any shape, in my opinion. Um, if they're congruent, then they're parts. So corresponding congruent parts. It means the parts that correspond will be congruent. So if the triangles are the same, then the parts that correspond, the parts that kind of line up, those will be the parts that are congruent. So if these two triangles are the same, then I know that their parts are the same. Which ones? Well, these correspond, and these correspond, and these correspond, right? Okay. So how do we know which parts correspond? Well, we've been doing it this whole time. How we arranged our letters is how we know which ones go together. So if I want to write that A is congruent to B, which I do, that's my end goal, right? I need to see, do A and B correspond? Look up at our writing here. Do you see how A and B are in the same spot? Then they're corresponding. And if they're corresponding, then they're congruent. So we're done. Spike box. That's it. So we proved the triangle's the same, and then we know which parts match up, right? A and B go together, C goes with C, D goes with D. Question. If we know the triangles are congruent, by CCP, we know that the segment AC must be congruent to what? BC. See how they're in the same spot? So once you have the triangles congruent, you can use this to prove a lot of things, right? I can prove AC and BC are the same. I can prove that CD and CD are the same. I can even prove, check this one out. This one's kind of weird. I can prove that DA is the same as DB. Let's find that on our diagram. See how they're on the outside, right? DA and DB. DA is this. DB is that. So I can prove they're the same because they're in the same relative location. They're corresponding, right? D, A, and D, B. So, moral of the story. Get as much information as you can. Prove the triangles congruent, right? That's always a good step. And then afterwards, use CCP to prove the parts congruent, right? That's the game plan. Get as much information as you can. Prove the triangles congruent. And then prove what you want to prove congruent by using CCP, right? Once the triangles are congruent, their parts will be. So we had to get to here to say they're congruent so we could say they're parts of each other. Have you ever been in Sunday school? I know I have, being a boy. I was sitting in a class with uh, Peter McMinn. Peter McMinn is a very old lady. I think she's still alive, shout out to Peter. Um, and she was my Sunday school teacher, wonderful lady, excellent person. And you know, as young Derek was off to do, I'd be sitting in Sunday school and I'd be daydreaming about anything else other than the Lord. Um, and Peter would go, blah, 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 and I would just zone out, right? Kind of like you guys do with me. So, um, I'd be sitting there, you know, dreaming of the things of the Lord. 
blah, 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 blah. And Derek, what do you think? Because you didn't get stuff right, you weren't paying attention, you had to go to big church. And they take you up there and you have to take your parents and they know. And they say, you know, if I didn't want to do that, especially since my grandfather was a preacher. Um, and I still might be one, guys. I still could be one. I almost became one, I still can. Can you imagine? Right. Anyway, so she'd ask a question. She'd be like, Derek, what do you think? And I'd be like, and I'd go, is the answer Jesus? And she'd, yes, Derek, good job, great job. You're always paying attention, man. Right? Yes, and she'd give me a Jesus name. Right? And be like, thank you, Vita. Thank you, God. All of them, like that. Right? Um, anyway, the moral of this story is that if you're not sure what to do, CCP is kind of like the Jesus answer. Is it by CCP? Yes, good job. Great job, Maddie. It is by CCP. Now, is that going to work a lot of the time? It's going to work like 60% of the time. So don't get mad when it's not. Okay? But, 60% of the time, it works every time, right? Anchor man, anybody? No? 60% of the time, it works 100% of the time? Nope. Didn't hear this from me. Go home and watch it. Don't you dare. Okay? You can't handle this type of thing. Okay, this is a uh, Will Ferrell film. Anybody watch it? Um, no. <laughs> no, not until you get it. We got it. She is in red. You guys are all spoiled, right? Oh, Not spoiled right. like with candy and stuff. I mean, like, you've seen things that cannot be unseen. Your ears have heard things that cannot be unheard. She's good, okay? We don't want to spoil that. Okay, so, watch it at home. But you have no evidence that I've given you, you know, this instruction, right? Between you and me. I do. All right, so, that's it. Drop a perpendicular. Shared side, LPT gets us the other angle. Then we say by HL, hypotenuse and legs match, so the triangles must be the same. And then if the triangles are the same, then their parts are the same. Well, which parts? Well, the parts that I want, A and B. See how they go together? Now, question. Is A, angle A, going to be congruent to angle B? From this diet, from what I've written, is A going to be congruent to D? No way, Jose. They're not in the same spot. See how A is on the front and D is in the back? A and B go together, C and C go together, D and D go together, right? Because they're in the same relative spot. That's what it means to be corresponding. They're in the same relative location. All right, campers. Number two. It's the same thing, except instead of giving us the sides, what did they give us? Try again. Angles. Angles. Maddie, you're on fire. You're like us for Whoa. The I cried. The yeah, they did die. And the kangaroo in the fence? Yeah. yeah. That was, that's awful. Climate change is real, guys. It's a real thing. And what's really bad is that we're going to have rising sea levels and then we're going to have all salt water everywhere. And we can't drink salt water. And that really sucks. Oh, all right. <laughs> so, that really sucks. Sucks. do something yeah. about it. It's your generation's time. We did our best. We sucked at it. So it's like up to you now. Yeah, when he went to Hong Kong and his shoes melted. It's his I don't think that's global warming, but that is a funny story. He was no, like, he was like my shoes in where was it? Hong Kong. He was yeah. like he was like you guys need to do something about climate change and pollution. His shoes melted. Sir, Dang, you know what you got to vote for if you want. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Alex, what do you have to say? Yeah, so depending, depending on which scientist you ask, yes. The Newsday clock sometimes ticks faster. All right, anyway, enough about this. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to prove that CA and CB are the same. Well, what are CA and CB? These two line segments right here, right? So before they gave us those, and we found the angles, right? Well, now we're proving that if you give us the angles, we can do the reverse and find the sides, right? So my first advice to you, drop yourself a little perpendicular. Make two triangles. Now, drawing that and saying that are two different things. So make sure you say it as well. And you know how to say it, right? Life is not about what you do, it's who you do it with. So work together and see if you can figure this one out. Hint, you're not going to use HL for this one. You won't use HL. Don't just write down what you had on the other page. It's similar but not the same. Dream team. Dream team. Look at her go. And remember, you're not only just dropping a line, but you're dropping a line at 90, right? <coughs> but we won't use HL. Doing all right, Doc? I'm 
sounds good, yeah. All right. Have you have questions, raise your hand, come over and check your work. Stay off in the right direction, et cetera, et cetera. Easier on your own.
right with the triangle. Oh, I got one side. Right? Oh. So right with the triangle. Right. So by angling the side, we're doing triangle. by AAS, right? Yo. And then by the LPT, you know that these angles are the same? Yeah, yeah. so that on your day. The triangles were congruent. And now how do we prove the triangles oh. congruent? Can't use HL because yeah. we don't know anything about the hypotenuse. No, you have to prove this. Oh. Y C A. Not A A. C A side. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you got to show why this is congruent to this. So it's like Australia. What? Well, I don't know. A hard angle. I don't know. C A. Yeah, that's your show. C A and C A. How do you know that? Why are they congruent? We are Australia. Oh, wait, you you know, the no. Why? Yes. Why did you go from what Mr. Mack is saying? It will, I just Oh, wait, no. We're the animals. He's the fire because he brings us down. From this one to this one. Yeah, it will be. They're the same triangle. This is the reason for this one. This is the reason for this one. Not by angle side. What did you do? What did you do? You got a roof right there. What's the word? What's the word? Oh, it's my CP. I thought you were pointing down there. Huh? Huh? Pardon? So, until after you say the triangle. After? So, using the information you have right now, you can get the triangle. What? We'll get there. Okay. You're up to where I am. Yeah. You like that? She's a goose. Okay. I think everybody's back in the same spot, so I'm going to do it up on the board, okay? I think we did it wrong. Disgusting. Alright, you guys ready? I'm going to get you to the promised land, or at least to the halfway point. Uh -oh. I didn't, that wasn't me. That was not me. It's a That was not even me. What, no one said anything. Alright, here we go. First off, let there be line. Let CD be perpendicular to AB. So I'm going to draw that on my diagram. Here it is. It's beautiful. That's D. Then I'm going to say, I know that we have a shared side here. So I'm going to say that CD is congruent to itself because a shared side, right? Then I'm going to say, I know this angle by LPT, right? By linear pair theorem, the measure of this angle, I'm going to call it angle ADC equals 90. I think everybody, for the most part, got up to there more or less. If not, are you with me now? Okay. Yes. Now, we do have enough information to prove these triangles congruent now. How are we going to do it? Alex, do you see it? Okay. Did I have you up to here? No? Shared side. This right here? That's me writing that I dropped the perpendicular. Should be CD and AB. She'll help you out. CD is congruent to itself by shared side, and then we got LPT saying that's 90. So we added that in. Now check it out. These triangles will be congruent. I know that triangle A C D is congruent to the other triangle, that's B C D. By how do I know the triangles are congruent? Maddie, heck part. Nope, not yet. I, that's after the triangles are congruent. What is it? Angle, angle, side. By angle, angle, side. Does everybody see yes. AAS? Yes. Angle, angle, side. Angle, angle, side. Yes. And so now I can say that their parts are congruent. So by CCP, I know the parts to be congruent. So CA should be congruent to CB. Let's check. Here's CA. Is CB in the same spot? Oh, yeah. I don't get the CCP. Exactly. That's a new thing. Let me help you out. So after we have this, everybody get up to there. Everybody get up to here. Now that we know they're congruent, we know that corresponding parts will be congruent. That's what that means, okay? So, corresponding means same relative spot. See how A and C are in the same spot as B and C? Nope. Then we can say that C, A, and C, B are congruent. Because nope. they're in the same spot. Maddie, you with me? No. Okay, let me try again. Stay with me. Right? So, I know this, right? That they're congruent. Yeah. Now I can say that the corresponding parts will be congruent. So see how A, C, and B, C are in the same spot? The first two. Mm -hmm. 
right? That means they correspond. So if they correspond, I can use this to say that they're the same. See how AC and BC are the same? Okay, I so just wrote CA and CB, right? You what? I think what might have confused you is that this says AC and I wrote CA. This says BC and I wrote CB. I just wrote them both backwards. Better? So the last thing that's going to be hardest is this thing. Once you have the triangles, you just see what matches up, right? So Maddie, for instance, if I wanted to prove that AD and DB are the same, after I prove the triangles congruent, I can look at AD, first and third, and BD, and say they're congruent by CCP, because they're in the same spot. Okay? So now I know that. But anyway, that's that on that. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Great job today. They won't see it in my room, um, but I can I can talk to them about it. Yeah. Do you think we'll see it on an SAT thing?